All right. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening uh, for our first uh, baseball webinar uh, of the season as we get rolling into uh, uh, winter sports. Uh, we're rolling into spring sports as well and, and getting some uh, baseball talk going. So uh, we have Greater Naples Officials Association here with us, Jeff Tinbarge, Isaac Fuller, and uh, Rob Mackett. So we appreciate you gentlemen for taking the time and uh, sharing this with our officials that are joining us tonight. Uh, and again, thank you for all those uh, of you joining us and taking time away from your family here for about an hour or so um, as, we, as we prepare for an upcoming season. Um, the Q&A box is open. Uh, we'll monitor that throughout. Um, we'll probably answer all questions, whether it's on the topic or FHSA uh, specific at the end. Um, they have a video that they want to show and kind of run through that we'll be able to go back and forth. Um, so it will be set up a little bit different regarding questions, um, but feel free at any time to answer those, uh, ask those questions and we'll get to them um, uh, at the end. Um, as, as with anything uh, within the past uh, for our webinars, that, uh, this will be recorded. Um, it will be posted on the central hub. Um, currently the presentation that these gentlemen have for us says three uh, man mechanics kind of coming from the NFHS before we make it live and send it out to everyone else for training and things like that. Um, they are going to adjust that and, and make it a three per, uh, to say three person. Um, so we just want to make that note uh, before we get started. Um, so gentlemen, it's, it's all yours. Thank you. Go ahead and unmute. And uh, we'll go ahead and I'll start sharing my screen. Yes. All right. All right. So before we get started, I mean, the main um, the, the objective what we're trying to do here with the video that, that we created was uh, just to help umpires uh, prepare to succeed in the three persons mechanics. And the, anim is, the video is animated, It'll, the arrows will point in the directions that, um, that show you where you'll, you'll, you'll go. And um, so, and it's just another, another learning resource for you, for everyone out there. So, um, Jeff, you have anything you would like to say? Yeah, I do. I want to thank you for doing this, taking the time to put this together and making this video with a mission in mind. And the mission was to, like you said, make umpires better. And what you put together here, it really encourages a progressive, ever evolving, if you will, training mindset. And it gives us a video, the umpires, which will serve as a baseline for FHSA evaluations, uh, training sessions within your own groups. So everybody's on the same page with regards to movements of umpires, especially with starting positions. Um, and also for the FHSA state series contest games. So everybody's on the same page. Yet this video really doesn't show everything that an umpire needs to perform. Now uh, you talk about judgment, you talk about timing, discretion, communications, keys, that comes within your own associations, um, your own, own organization, learning these keys to working together in this three-person umpire system. So please also note that all of the umpire starting positions are noted in this video, but we're not going to verbalize each single one in detail tonight. So all you sharpshooters out there, just beware. All right, and what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, play the video and we'll pause it throughout. Um, and if there's any questions, Jeremy, just, you know, let us know. We can pause it and, and uh, answer the questions and we'll move on. SAA baseball three man mechanics training video to enhance the learning process. Animated diagrams showing umpire movements have been utilized. You can also pause and rewind to replay the movements of the umpires.
Teaching and learning the FHS AA three-man system begins with training. FHS AA three-man system. The FHS AA acknowledges that other three-man system exists. However, it is expected that this three-man system be used for all FHS AA state series contests. Pre-game, pre-game, pre-game. A great pre-game can help your crew handle or even avoid that 5% of the game that doesn't take care of itself. It's amazing when some of the things that you talk about in your pre-game happen during the game. Here are a few pre-game topics to discuss. The topics are not limited to those shown. Crew chiefs, associations, please develop a quality pre-game procedure for your umpires. I'm gonna pause it here. And um, if Jeff, there's a, if there's something you wanna emphasize at all at this point. I do. Um, I wanna talk about how prior planning prevents poor performance. Prior planning prevents poor performance. So it's mandatory. We have a pregame to talk about these things which you have on your screen there. And um, you cover these things before the game. And like you said, and like the video said, it's amazing when you have a quality pregame, you talk about situations, you talk about rotations, you talk about overthrow responsibilities. And then when it happens on the field, because you've covered it, it's like that aha moment of we were prepared. Uh, the players are getting prepared for big games. We get prepared for all of our games. And Isaac, um, it was a little bit squelched out there a little bit. You could see that uh, some of the letters were a little bit blurry like it was on the on the. I think uh, it's just the feed through game. Zoom. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll catch up with itself once the feed comes in, but it's nice and clear now. Anything you wanted to add about that, about... Mm -hmm. Uh, training or retraining umpires to to have quality pregame no it's just i mean with the pregame I, that's i mean that's exactly what i was told by a state evaluator that a, a pregame is uh is mandatory and as you know uh, as well as a, a post game you know it said pregame is mandatory and i had already been told that but coming from a state evaluator when he said that I was like that yeah, makes sense that you you know you have some type of pregame so i'll go ahead and continue the video Good. We'll pause it here as well about the abbreviations and, and over, you know, overview of the basics. Uh, Jeff, is there in a, anything in particular that you're wanting to just discuss right here? Yes, I'd like to talk about the pause, read, and react. Um, reading the reactions of the fielders, um, it, whether it's two man or three man, base umpire really baseball's hit, and instead of ball watching. We're going to really make sure that we're paying attention to what the fielders are doing, taking that nice pause, reading the action, and then react to the actions of the fielders. Is there anything you want, you want to talk about on this slide here? Well, I would say the, the trouble balls, I mean, um, is, is very key. And um, once again, this is something you could probably pregame. And, but as far as trouble ball, like we've been – we, that I've been taught is what's written, what was written in the manual was fair foul, first responsibility. And you got possible home run or, or the warning track ball, field is converging. And then I got trap ball or shoulder over the shoulder or below the waist catch. So, I mean, those would be your trouble balls and, and by pause and read and react, you could probably catch those things. And uh, that's when you probably would like to go out. Right? But it's like, so that's something you'll, you can discuss in your pregame with your, with your crew on if you're going to go out what you're going to go out on 100 percent. and then if you do go out on that baseball it sure looks good when you have a key point in the game and a guy dives at a baseball or you got players converging you got an umpire out taking a look at it and on the other hand 
sure looks bad when you don't go out on that baseball and you don't get a good look at it. If in doubt, go out. These are four excellent coaching points, as well as umpires should strive to have eyes stationary when viewing the action at the most critical point. Examples, fair foul, catch, no catch, tags. Umpires must be willing to move when necessary as the play may demand that umpire to move to see the action. Swipe tags, players moving in a struggling view. Be athletic, anticipate the changing to get the best and optimal view of the most important action. I'll pause it here and um, and uh, Jeff. I mean, we these are very good quality coaching points. Like this is right out of the the manual. Nothing was changed out of here except for the voiceover that we added. But is there anything else you would uh, would like to emphasize or, or talk about as as a coaching point? I would. We talked about being athletic. We talked about umpires being athletic and being willing to move, uh, especially the physical conditioning. Uh, in the first sentence of the umpire's manual, dead first sentence, it says being in proper physical condition is an essential requirement for a baseball umpire. The game requires umpires to move quickly to obtain the proper position to render the best judgment on a play. An umpire who is not in sufficient physical condition is a hindrance to his or her partner and even the completion of the game. And I love this last one is the umpires, excuse me, the athletes work hard to be prepared at a high level. So should the umpires. It's something that umpires get evaluated on. I, I'm real heavy on this. I, I really believe that umpires should be uh, athletic and able to see the action to the play. So it's something that we can all work on. Um, Flat out important, as it says. All right. Never heard it. Rotations and signals. There are 10 rotations in three man, with the new addition of runner on first and third being a reverse rotation. All signals can be found in the NFHS umpire's manual. Crews may choose to use different signals. Once again, umpires should discuss this during a quality pregame meeting. Anything you want to talk about there, Isaac, with the starting positions? Yeah, I mean, this, like I said, nothing has really been changed out of the manual. This is was was just typed up exactly the same way, but just the starting position with nobody on U one and U three, as a State of Value, like I said, told me was that if they're playing back, that's when you'll you want to be six to eight, um, six to ten behind behind them, and if they're playing at the bag or in front of that bag, go to go 12 to 15, go to 12, 15 behind them. Uh, that way you give yourself a good, good sight and to see things. And instead of being, if you're up and cause the person might be trying to, you know, the lead off bunner, lead off batter might be trying to button. They're playing up being six to eight or six to 10. That's by the bag. It's just, you know, take a few steps back is what I, I was, what I was told. Straight up, it's standard operating procedure. It's what uh, it's what you can pregame. And when, like I've said, when you're training in your own organizations, it's written down on paper, but it's it's imperative that the trainers in each association get their hands on things like this. So you can in turn show this video to them. And more importantly, get on the field, do field trainings. We'll get into that later about how young umpires can be trained in the three-man system where they need live reps. Like I said, we'll get to that later about how to how to train that, but anything else to add to that? No, uh, basically what the next uh, 
slide will be is going to have a diagram of the starting positions with nobody on and you'll see the animation of the arrows moving in a, on a clean hit. Um, you'll see one on U1 going out and then you'll see a slide with U, U3 going out. Okay. So we need to be ready to watch the left side of the screen once Isaac gets this rolling. Um, you're going to see the animation. You're going to see the arrows moving here once it gets going. So we have a clean hit to the outfield left side. And I'll pause it there. I'll All pause right. it there. And if you want to either talk about that right there and kind of what, what has happened. I would love to. So first pitch of the game there, because we said there's nobody on. We have a clean hit. So let's start with you three. U3, we call U3 the rabbit. I know other people call the rabbit and the U3 different things because U3 gets a lot of running. They're gonna run a path right where that arrow is to the area of the cutout. They're getting ahead of the play. So U1 goes into the library, which is, if you look over my shoulder here, you can actually see the library on this side here. It's basically the area of the coach's box. Why do we call it the library? It's where you get a nice read of a lot of things. So U1 watches the touch of the runner touching first base, right? And then stays into that area and plate umpires rotating to third, right? Rotating to third on that play. Plate umpire mirrors the runner as you, as the base runner goes to second and commits to go there. That's when you, or excuse me, the plate umpire finishes that rotation and goes all the way into third base. Once U1 commits to second, then U1 then can start to commit to going to home. But U1 has the luxury of time on that standard rotation. Anything I left, did I leave anything out of that, Isaac? No, no, not on that. It's just your standard, you know, rotation on a clean hit. We'll watch the slide to the, to here with U1 goes out of what, U3 does and what the plate umpire does on a clean hit. So nice to have those arrows, dude. So yeah. nice to have those arrows. And I'll, I'll pause it there very quickly to just kind of, and this is, I mean, you, it's, you one pretty much like plate umpire has a screen. If you want, if nobody on, they're going up and they're just watching the touch. And once the batter runner commits to go to second, You'll, you, the arrow there have, has them retreating back home for any plays that might happen at, at the plate. But U3 will pick up batter runner at, at second and have them at second and third. Okay. And we'll go ahead and continue the, the video there. And you'll see U3 going out. And what the plate umpire does on this is they just stay home. And U1 has everything. And I could pause it there. I see we have a question out there, Jeremy. Yeah, it says in this case, PU should uh, be making call at third in foul territory. For when on uh, with a clean hit or which which one? That, that, would have, been, that would have been, I'll take that, Isaac. Okay. That would have been standard rotation on the first one. Yes. That is, it's a clean hit. We didn't, we didn't explain a triple, but on that clean hit, he is staying, he or she, the plate umpire is taking that from foul territory, all right? Straight line extended through third base into that library where you're reading that play at third base. Do you want me to go back and so, cause it's in the white box up above the clean hit. Do you want me to go back so they, they can see it? Uh, or yeah, why not? So right here where it says plate umpire makes call from foul territory at third. Yes. It's, it's just right there. Yeah, um, it's, it's underlined on there. And like I said, we it's nice to, if we can go through every single thing, but yes, the plate umpire. And that's the, the awesome thing is what Isaac was able to just do. Since this, this is now on video, you can just scrub right back to it if there's any questions in any, any of your training sessions that the associations are gonna perform. If there's a question from the from the crowd, you can go back and say, yes, that was on there. It's right there. Yeah, 
I'll continue. Really good question. Isaac, I think we talked about this one here is where the communications paramount. So when U3 goes out, not only is U1 reading his or her partner, once U3 commits to go out, U1 has to jump inside because yep. U1 now knows that U1 is going to take the batter runner all the way around the bases. Somebody else that can help out on this play is the plate umpire. If there's any indecision on U1's part to get inside, if the plate umpire sees U3 take off because the partners watch each other and not the baseball, plate umpire can find, and this is where your associations can find a way. I know we found a way that really helps out is that the plate umpire or the opposite umpire who's not going out just verbalizes two man, two man. I don't want to scream on this video here, but two man, two man. So that sends the signal there to you one that you one needs to jump inside. Uh, so next few um, slides up once again, but nothing's changed on this. You got, you decide this at a pregame of, fair file responsibilities. Is it a cutout or is it going to be the back? I mean, that's something you pregame. Here we just see the motion of the, the gray, the gray area. I mean, but as it says uh, here, uh, this is uh, when U1 does not stay foul, even if routine, you know. So, uh, like I said, just, just once again, that's something just a pregame, I would say. Overthrows. I say nothing has been changed with 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 any of this from the previous um, three man manual, three three persons manual. With that, here we're in. Here we're, we're in the runners on first. Uh, we'll talk about the, the, the starting position. I mean, here, uh, U3 has an option here. They have an option to be in either deep, deep B or deep C. That's something I would say also you can talk about in pregame, but if you're new to three man, try both. See which one you, uh, you, you prefer. Um, and um, and just and just try them both, um, but you know you're you'll see the starting position here in the next slide of where they are, and their movement on a on a clean hit or or if, if uh, U one goes out. I mean, Jeff, do you want to add anything to that, or is there? Um, I think on this one here, on the clean hit one, I don't think I have anything to add. I think you covered everything that needs to be covered on that, correct? Yeah, I mean, just you three, like I said, you have the option. And like I said, I, I, a lot of other umpires say they prefer deep B. Some say they just prefer deep C, but try both. And whichever you're comfortable with, if you're, you know, decide if you're going to be square to the plate or to the dugout. And, um, but you're moving is simply just dropping down into the working area right there between B and C to, uh, to pick up uh, the runner coming into second. And this is once again is another standard rotation as well. And I will add to it that I forgot about this. I'm sorry. I prefer deep C 
as you three, because if they're especially with a left-handed hitter, that you have an umpire on that side of the field to go to on a check swing. I think it looks better. If you've got two umpires on the same side of the field with U1 being an A and U3 being in deep B, when your plate umpire has looks up and, and says, did he go when both umpires are on that side of the field, just it, it doesn't look as good. It looks better if that umpire is on the opposite side of the field. You go to that umpire and make a, a real clean decision on that. I think you get a better look. That's what we're looking for anyways, to get that optimal look. Next few slides will be just that U1 goes out and what happens. <clears throat> I think this was real critical right here that when that umpire goes out, you can wait till the next one. Yeah, we can talk about it there. Go ahead. We can talk about this one now, or we can we can wait until the outfield coverage. I'm sorry, Isaac. Let's go no, to the go outfield. I would I say go ahead and talk about it and okay. On this one here, when we have U1 who has the he has the option of going out on a trouble ball on this. Well, if we have U3 in deep B or deep C and U1 goes out on a, on a, a fly ball or especially a, a sharp low line drive, U3 who thinks, which they do, they have the V, which we'll get to in that next slide. But if U1 goes out, U1 takes responsibility. I guess the major question is how does U3 know that U1 goes out on that ball? First of all, they have to see it. But more importantly to me, because you don't have the luxury of time, you one has to really verbalize, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going out. So that you three knows that we are not gonna have a double call on this. It's about being assertive. It's about being verbal on this and really letting your partner know that you've made a decision to go out on that baseball. Does that make sense? Yep, totally agree with that one. Yeah. Love the animation, man. That's that V we were talking about. the next few slides will bring up what you said about it's susceptible for them to, to go out on um on it and um and make a call so you know definitely like senior it'll say it here i think on this next next pop-up And I'll pause it here to where it says umpire inside must be mindful of his partner possibly going out. So looking at your partner, even though you're inside and reading it is, um, is very important. Like uh, Jeff said, you just, you don't want to make that double call. So you should always be, you know, looking at, uh, at your partner and communicating. I mean, did I, did I cover pretty much everything that you, you thought we, you went before that, Jeff? Yes, sir. And I'll let it play out. And... and as you're letting that play out, there's the one right there that's blowing up on the screen. If you can pause it just for a second to really okay. talk about the with the training with this. In your own organizations, when you have young umpires in the field or when you have veteran umpires in the field, you stop everything and you say, this is a critical point. We have to be able to be assertive. We have to talk to each other. And why it's so important that umpires get field time with three man, three person training, sorry, with three person in the three person umpire system, that it's not just watching a video, it's getting out on the field in training sessions where this happens and you get to, you get to see and hear your partners communicate with you. I agree. I 
Isaac, did you want to explain on this one? Yeah, the, we just, uh, now we moved into the situation where we've gotten into the reverse rotation. Um, but this is right runner on first and second. And you won, you'll probably want it'll probably be holding them on, Carlos, but you're gonna be six to eight behind them because you need to be able to see the pitcher, you know, and you know, still be able to see that check swing if need be. And if they're playing up, if you know, maybe there's a possible bunt. Here, once again, you want to be 12 to 15 back uh, behind behind them and not right up on that. Um, so, I mean, it's I mean, basically with as a reverse rotation, and you'll see on the on the clean hit, U1 is coming inside. You'll basically have two umpires inside. U1 is coming inside. They'll have the batter runner at, at first and uh, taking them into second. And, and when that happens, we'll, we'll talk about what communications uh, you'll need to to have with your partner and once again this is something however you communicate it is uh is up to up to you too um but you just want to make sure that you uh you know you're talking and i said like you'll see the animation of when they come in and if there was a reverse And here we'll stop it here because this is where you'll have that possibility if U1 goes out, um, plate umpire is coming up, um, up to third, and they're moving inside to make on a play. This is where you'll have the possible double tag. And um, so U3 just, you'll just drop down in there. You'll watch the tag, the tag up, and then plate umpire gets up moves inside to make that call. They move inside on this one. And if there's an overthrow or uh, and they have to, and there's going to be a plate at the plate, you retreat inside the diamond back to back to home plate to, to make that call because you won once they go out in, uh, in three persons, they stay out, okay? And like we said before, nothing has changed on any of these. Um, and if you have the manual, it's, it's written up the same exact way. We just took each one and uh, put it on its own individual video for animation purposes. Here we have first and third. Now I'll, I'm going to pause it very quick just to, be, to remind you. On first and third, you three, you're in your 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 starting position is, as they say, natural C, as if you were in if you were in two person umpiring. And here, you remind yourself that you're sliding over to the B side. You slide you slide over to the B side with first and third. So I'll let I'll let this play out, and um, we'll see uh, the first and third on a clean hit and then we'll watch what you what um what U3 does and the play down part does when U1 goes out. And once we can pause it, if anyone has any kind of question, we can always pause it or go back um on on the video. Isaac, before yeah. you before you hit play on that, this is the one where it's like you said, yeah. it's it's a standard rotation. I love how you mentioned that U3 needs to to pop over into the middle of the field or pop over into B. But the plate umpire's got a tough job on this one here. On a standard rotation, that's the signal we use. Boom, I said it without even thinking about it, is that that plate umpire on a clean hit has R3 touching home plate. So as you're watching R3 touch home plate, we've got to still be busting it Right, because you one didn't go out, and as we mentioned before, you're gonna you're gonna be and make this call at third, right? On you one, 
coming around, he commits. We've got to make that commitment to get to third base. A lot of problems can happen here. If that guy is lollygagging on the way home, you're going to just try your best to see, and you have to see that touch at home, but you still got to get to third. And we're also in a little bit of limbo here because if there is a base hit that ends up being a hit and a rotation to third, but then a possible tag up at third base, that plate umpire has a lot to do. He's got that very important job of seeing that tag up at third base. So a lot of things going on for the plate umpire in a standard rotation, first and third. We got a question out there. Um, out there, we go ahead, uh, Jeremy. Does does the U three ever go out from inside position on trouble to F seven? If so, what is the rotation? You want me to take that? Yeah, yeah. I was, go ahead. We, we do not go out from an inside position from deep C, deep B, C. We from that those inside positions the inside umpire in three man never goes out and if you want to think of it this way the umpires in a training session those umpires who are on the inside should not be stepping on on the dirt i know there's other times when you would step on the dirt stepping back we'll get to that slide but no the simple answer to that question is no they do not yeah, it was on the it was on the on the when you were in the V. It was on that slide, and we won't go back to it. But like I said, this this will be available to, to our organizations or individuals um, once we we send it to to Jeremy, and um, you'll you'll see where it says it says you never cross cross the baseline. You know you don't go out if you're inside. You never go out um, on a fly ball if it's in your area, and we'll let this um, rotation complete, and then we'll watch the U one go out on this got another question i'll let the i'll let the u3 the go out oh and then we'll answer the next question he was just saying thanks okay so um i'm going to pause it here because we're going to get into the 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 next slide is our the first and third um that is the new rotation that's optional okay and once again this is something that you'll you would probably want to pregame, and uh, and Jeff will 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 go through the uh, the new first and third reverse rotation option. Um, so we'll go ahead and I'll get it going here, and then we'll we'll we'll, we'll talk about it. As the, you're, so as you're getting it ready to go, there it, it's it pretty cool that we're we're now empowered. Love that word. We're empowered to use a reverse rotation in this situation. And as you, as you said there, Isaac, the umpire, your, your partners need to know, we all need to know which, uh, what each other are doing. So if you're using a reverse rotation, you handle it in your pregame and then you signal it, whatever your signal is gonna be for it. That way, everybody's on the same page, right? Every single umpire is on the same page. You know what each other are going to do. I'm a big fan of this reverse rotation in first to third because it allows the plate guy to see the most important action on this play. We've already covered the reverse rotation. So yeah. if we let the video play out. And this is on a clean hit. Yes. Just basic standard ro uh, reverse rotation. Oh, yeah, probably will come after he sees the touch. He comes up to the point of corner of the plate to, to see anything, you know, that comes on. I love how they what, what I will add though, what I it will add, and I'll go back here to the previous one, is that um communication once again is very important. I know usually I work with um uh, with partners and they they'll say, I'm I'm here or they'll say slide Isaac or slide Jeff. And it's communication is just important letting them know that you're there and the batter runner's coming, is moving up to second. And you have to, if you're U3, you're moving over towards third and taking that responsibility. 
you know, but once again, communication and just talking, communicating out on that field is, is, uh, is, it's, is, is big. I love it too, that you put the animation for the plate umpire to get back there, Isaac, just get that panoramic view of that catch and that tag up. What if you were trying to move towards third because you thought you had to get there and that guy makes a great diving catch and the guy tags or he doesn't tag? What a, I just love this option. I think it helps the plate on fire and something like this. And like I said, you, you do not have to use the reverse on this. This is, this is once again, this is something you can use. Uh, you, I mean, talk about it pregame um, and, and decide which one you're going to do because it really, the reason you need to know because the plate umpire needs to know what they're going to do. I mean, and um, so if you're doing it, just if you're going to go back just to standard, they'll need to know they got to get up to third. If you have voted on and you're talking about doing the reverse, then um, the plate umpire will know. But I tell you, I think the plate umpire is going to say, oh, I, I'm, I get to step back, watch everything, then come back up and, and, and work just the plate. And um, and I just think, it, like we said, it just it's just another option, okay? You can you have two now. Once again, nothing has changed in this situation with. Runner on second or second and third. Um, I don't know if there's anything you want to talk or add here, Jeff, in any in this situation, but nothing. This is really the only time that you won is inside, um, and they're in there that they're inside, and their starting position is is deep B. This is the only time you won is inside, uh, in their starting position. I will add to that there that and I know you mentioned it a little bit before, but it's the only time that you want is starting in DB. And I love the option that the base umpires have of either being square to the foul lines or to the dugouts opposite side or being square to the plate. And then both umpires need to be doing the same thing. It just looks clean when both umpires are doing the same thing. In here, this was added, I mean, I think a few years ago where the option of um, when there's with two outs, the second, second, and third, where where you uh, one is can go to back to the A position. And we'll talk a little bit about that and, and the importance of that uh, for the plate umpires. Um, say, and I'll stop here because with this, with the uh, option here, um, there's different, I would say, we use it for, for different reasons if U1 is going to go over back to A position or if they're going to stay. And um, Jeff, is, you know, you want to kind of talk about like some of the options that we give ourselves when, when to go back over if you're U1 or if you're going to stay inside there? You're talking about with, with two outs? Yep. Yeah, with well, two outs. With what we try to do is this, and we, we did this a couple of years ago, and a couple a couple of people questioned, and it was what was awesome about it was after a, a big baseball game, another crew asked us and said, hey, sometimes you guys went with option where you one goes back over on the line and A, and sometimes you didn't. Why did you do that? And we just thought it was cool how, you know, they weren't sharpshooting us and saying, oh, that's not what the book says. And, you know, they did it in a very cool way. And we're like, we don't want to make it about us. If there's a situation where, let's say there's a pitching change, uh, there's a, a break in the action, and we can shift over and get to the different position, meaning that we can get U1 in the A position, then we'll go ahead and do it. And Isaac, I want to you know, ask you here in a second to talk about the communication of why that's important to let your plate umpire know what you're doing in that situation. But to stop the game 
and to have the umpires move over into a different position, then the focus is on you. I mean, obviously that when we train our guys that we want our umpires, if they can be, to have you one in the A position, right? To really get that real good look at that whacker at first base, all right? With two outs runners on second and third, and there's a close play at first base. We would rather have that umpire in uh, a position so he can get that better read of that whacker at first. But Isaac, can you talk about um, why it's important to talk to your plate umpire when the umpires have moved? Well, they, yeah, because they're going to need to know what line is uncovered. And I know usually if it's um, if it's like a strikeout to get the second out and it's got a good pace, we I usually be like, I usually put my hands like, just stay. But it, like Jeff said, if it's like a throw over and they're getting the second out or there might be a conference, then we switch and the plate umpire sees that and they'll know which which um, which line is is uncovered. And, and that's a big responsibility for them. And then also by going over to uh, if the, you want going over, once you get into a like it shows here, a clean hit, that's a reverse rotation situation. So that's, there's things that you, you know, you know, that come up with with this situation that if you're going to stay, if you're staying put, then you three is using just out there by third base, using that bag as a as a as a, as a point of reference. If they go back, you three is coming inside to to natural to the natural C position. And now we have clean hit. You one's coming inside on a reverse rotation. You know. It's a lot to unpack as an Isaac. Just yeah. Three person system in in one night. It's why we keep saying it that the the organizations that give their umpires opportunities to train in this system are the are the umpiring associations that are getting better at three man. Can't can't say it any any easier than that. And I'll do a quick pause here because this is you on inside. And if you get squeezed by the, the infielder, your action is just basically you step, you know, steps back into the into the infield towards the foul pole to get your angle to make that play. And if it's the opposite and you're, you're stepping, I would say I would use the, I would come back here towards the 45 to get your angle here. But this is just a kind of a diagram. Like I said, this wasn't, nothing's changed. This is right out of the, the hand manual. But we, we just put it, like I said, we just put a little animation or the arrow where you would slide to uh, to kind of give you a visual and help you out with that. And it happens. If you're, you won and you, sometimes you do get squeezed, you need to just, just you just move, move into the infield here if it's going towards that way. I'm gonna. We're, we've gotten into the runner on on third only, and here is a very important. Um, and it it's like once again, this is out of the manual. Where first base, U one and U three, um, as it says right here in red, there says special signal between U one and U three. Whatever signal you and U one and U three come up with in um, in your pregame, that's important because basically it's saying if if you go out, I have your back. And if I go out, you got my back. And it's just one of those uh, moments that you just come up with a little scissor. And I know ours is, is we, we do the, 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 the guns here, but that's for in honor of one of our fallen uh, umpires uh, a few years ago and Steven Dotson. So we've, and he was a police officer and we, 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 we may have that signal for GNO way. And like I said, whatever you guys use, uh, you use in that situation, but definitely um, that way you'll know when it happens uh, that, you know, your partner is going to, is going to have your back on all on, cause they're going to have everything. If you one goes out, you three has it all. Just if you three goes out, you one has everything. And as you're letting that play there, Isaac, signals mean things. And like we said like words mean things. So when you signal, you do what you say you're going to do. I agree. 
That's a standard rotation there. So with the runner on third, it's a standard rotation. Which we did on one of the first ones. Here you'll see when U, U1 goes out. Two man, two man. And the plate umpire, once again, get a panoramic view because you're going to have R3 coming, coming home and then you can see everything else. And um, U3, you have, they have it all. They have it all. You know, so just, I would say, just come here right here to the working area and, you know, you'll have a play either uh, here at, at, at second base and then you're taking them into third, but you just get to your working or to your working area and just, and just follow, keep eyes on ball of, of where they're going. And you think about it, Isaac, they could have a snap throw back into first base. You want be over there all the way out. So you're busting it to the middle of the field into the working area. And this is why we talk about needing the need to be athletic. That needs to be an instantaneous read to get inside your partners going out. You got to cover him, especially that snap throw back in second base is going to be easy to get to first base is going to be a little bit more difficult. So and you'll see the action of what when you three goes out, we'll pause it. We have a question out there. Yeah. And what was it, the question? Should it be emphasized when the runner passes second base is when PU commits to third base? U3 is going to have everything there. Everything. Because this the rotation is off. Once you go, once U1 goes out on this on this baseball. Because you, the plate umpire has to stay home. He has the plate umpire, he or she, the plate umpire has all action at home plate. So as soon as U1 goes out on this ball, it's, it's, it's the way we've trained, two man, two man, two man. So U3 knows that they have all the plays at the bases. So U, U3, when they, once they come inside, they have to just read read the baseball play, know where the ball is, know where the players are, know where the runner is at, and be ready and be ready to get a good angle to make a call at any base. Couldn't say any better, but yeah, is I mean I mean unless they're saying, well, can the plate umpire help their their partner out and say you got it all? Yeah, they could say that. Okay, after they're yelling two man and you got it all, and you can, if that's something you pre gamed and talked about that you're going to maybe help them out and say that, go for it. Especially in a training session, especially if you're, you're an association that has ambassadors, that you have veteran umpires who know three man, who are willing to commit to train people in a committed way to learning three man. Um, and you communicate with them. Like Isaac just said, this play, if I'm the plate umpire and I've got a new umpire working at third and you one goes out, I'm yelling two man, two man, you've got it all. You've got it all. Meaning like Isaac said, they have all the bases. So I'll let this play out and you'll see you three going out. I think you got you one on this one. But this is, yeah, this now this is you three going. You made the video, Isaac. I'll be quiet. <laughs> we just had you one. My bad. And it's just opposite on this one. And you think of this, this is two man mechanics. Once it's three, two person mechanics. Once you three makes a commitment to go out, there it is. And this is our bases loaded. Nothing has changed on this. You know, nothing. I mean, there's, I'm going to let the video play out through for this bases loaded. And we got reverse rotation here on a clean hit. Um, play up our stays home. They have the luxury of staying home and just can move up to the point of, point of the point of the plate. They need to get into that wedge. With, if you one goes out. Uh, when they go out, U1, U3 is just right here in the working area. Once again, they got it all. 
played off our I'll drop back, get a view of everything, primary view, and then move up. And um, and they're just working the plate. And and you three, you you pretty you got it all. So staying here, coming into the working area, you can pretty much you you can move and to get into you know where you need to make that call. And uh, we as we've been uh, we've said angle over distance will be probably key in that situation when U1 goes out. Now I'm going to pause it here. Yeah. We got a little, it. Bit of, little bit of lag there, Isaac. I know it's the, the it's words. Zoom in the internet, but when, 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 they get, when they get this video through Jeremy, it, 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 you know, like I said, I think it has something to do with the Zoom and the sharing of the screen. But when they get the video, when the video gets sent to their organization to get to, to uh, Jeremy, it'll be, they won't, it, they won't have that situation. So do you want to talk about this with the infielders in? Yes, I would love to talk about it because this is new, All right, The base umpires now need to be in front when the infielders are in. So you can see here, and it's obviously going to happen, you know, 99% of the time with you one who would have normally started in that deep B position. But think about it. If you're standing right, if you one was back in deep B right now, he or she would be standing right next to the second baseman. Not a real good situation to be in as an umpire standing right next to the player. So instead of moving backwards, which really almost takes you I believe, as Mike Knoll said, back to a two umpire system. So let's get up and let's get in front. And let's think about some scenarios where this really helps out. Being in deep B and deep C is basically standing next to or even with the mid infielders. Not good. Uh, most of the time when an infielder plays in, that infielder is going to start on the dirt and then when they take those two steps forward to get into their ready position, they're going to be lined up right next to us. We're flat out in the way if we do that. That's why we need to be up and never behind. Um, being even with or behind the fielders is really not conducive to viewing the most critical action. That's what we're there for. We need to view and make a judgment on a line drive catch, no catch. Very hard to do that when looking through the shoulders or the head of the player who's going to stand right next to us. So even if there's some silly back pick, we're in a great position to see that. If you look at the, the video there, the screen where you one is in front and never behind. So what it says there is one step inside of the mound, six feet back of the mound and shoulders square to the plate. Explanatory. I'll move on to the line drives, um, pop ups as far as the coverage when it's the plate guy. Now, pause it here. And once again, this is nothing has changed. This was right out of the, the manual um, plate umpire, whether U3 or U1 are on the lines. This is their responsibility. When U1 is inside of U3, same, here's the responsibility. But eye contact at times, you know, maybe necessary because your partner may have a better look. And this is something that um, you can discuss at pregame. And it's, and it, it'll, they might have a better look than you. And, you know, and um, so talking about it pregame, going over the line drive and pop up coverage is, is uh, probably something that definitely, uh, Include in your pregame and to, and to go over. Really getting that head still to watch that action of that line drive. So important. Hey, Isaac, on the uh, previous slide on the, the far right one, 
Yep. It had U3 there on that first base side as long uh, as well with U3 in the middle. Um, if that should be a U1, we may want to get that clarified before we send it out as well. Yeah, U1 um, is right here inside. Go, go, go back to the last slide. I'll go back. Okay. Here we go. See, on the right, it has... It has U3. Yeah, I see that. We'll clean that. Yes, that's a typo. So yeah, don't worry. We get like we're gonna be sending this back out to you. So everyone out there, we apologize on that. I didn't catch that, but we'll make sure that it's a U1 right here, along with um renaming it uh three person and everything else. Uh that might say, you know, three man in here will change it all out of there as well. So thank you, thank you, Jeremy, for, for catching that. Yes, sir. That's the only mistake you're allowed to make on this video, I think. <laughs> no, uh, we'll be all right. It's all good. And here, once again, you know, why we, we'd want to talk about uh, coverage during the pregame. I mean, communication is important. Why? To avoid that double call. And that probably, a, that's, that's just not a good look to have the double calls. Someone saying safe or catch or and then somebody saying, no, not a catch. So, Talking about this at your pregame is, is, you know, adding to your pregame list is, I would say, is is uh, is a is a good thing to do. I would like to thank State Evaluators Mike Knowles and Jeff Timbarch for their advice and feedback while creating this video. And a special thanks to everyone who created the FHS AA Three Man Mechanics Manual. Without their dedication and hard work, this video would not be possible. Last but not least, I'd like to thank Director of Athletics Robbie Linderman and Assistant Director of Officials Jeremy Hernandez for their support of this training video. And I would say that is all we have here um, for that, you guys. Um, we'll take any questions, anyone out there. We, I mean, uh, uh, once again, I appreciate the opportunity, Jeff and I, and GNOA that uh, Robbie and Jeremy have given us tonight. So, God, I see we have a question out there. Yeah, um, from Dan. So it looks like the 21-22 mechanics are the same as last year, except for reverse rotating options in play with runners at second, second and third, and first and third, correct? So the, the two switches, just to be clear, are there there's a reverse rotation option that umpires can that are now empowered with. They instead of doing the standard rotation, they can do the reverse rotation. That is correct. And the other change is, is that with, with the infielders in, that the umpire inside now scoots up and is in front. And if that's the exact same thing that you just said, Jeremy, I apologize. I was just reiterating. Yeah, those are the only two, because the second and second and third with the option, when it gets to two outs, is, that, was, that, was, that, was already in the, that was already in the manual. Perfect. Well, we thank you guys. Um, anyone else have any questions, please feel free to throw them in. Um, we'll give a couple more seconds uh, for you to type those in. Um, we do have a few more uh, lined up. Uh, the next one we have December 1st. Uh, we're going to wait until after uh, the Thanksgiving uh, holiday um, to get going again. Um, that one will be done by uh, River City. Uh, and they'll be discussing the um, uh, pinch, pinch. I think it's pinch hitter, I believe is what they decided on. So once I get clarification and we get a time for sure, um, obviously that will go out uh, probably about a week before. So everyone has a time to uh, register for it. Who wants to take part of it? That's perfect. Um, Shout out to the veterans. Shout out to the veterans out there. Yes. Thank you to yes, the veterans Mike tomorrow. Um, have a bunch yeah, of thank more. yous. So out there. Um, they're just saying thank you. Great job. Thank uh, you, 
Um, uh, Mr. No Parks uh, gave a special uh, message to to uh, Rob, so I'll let him read that if he if you uh, chooses. Um, but again, uh, uh, thank you guys. Thank you everyone who joined us tonight. Uh, look forward to the upcoming season. Um, excited! It's been a, a great year so far um, with fall sports uh, starting to wrap up on our end. Um, so uh, we're we're excited. Things are kind of moving in more of a normal uh, uh, pattern than it was last year. Even though we know there are still struggles out there and things like that, uh, schools having to deal with uh, different issues. So um, we, we just ask everyone to again, uh, as last year, be uh, flexible, communicate with the schools. Um, there's probably going to be cancellations. Um, it's happened in volleyball and football this year. Um, I don't want to say luckily, but uh, it seems like our schools are a little more prepared for it, I guess, is the best way to say it. Um, we didn't hear about too many issues on our end, so it seemed like things were going normal. Um, but we did still hear of cancellations and things like that, so we're not acting like uh, it's fully back to normal. But it seems with schools having a year of, I guess, experience might be the best way of how to handle COVID. Um, they're able to handle the game cancellations and officials. Um, a little more on their end without having to communicate our, or directly communicate with our office to get advice. Um, so uh, again, we appreciate everything you guys do. Uh, thank you to the veterans out there. Uh, come tomorrow. Uh, hopefully you have a wonderful day um, and we'll uh, see you on December 1st. Thank yep, you. And like I said, we'll clean it up and we'll get it out to you guys. Appreciate that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Let's have a good night.